What is going on, guys? It's your host, Neil Villapiano, and welcome to another edition of Mofobo Network Presents. As always, thank you guys so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to check this video out. And if you like this video and you want to see more of it, make sure you like and subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can check out all the videos that we post every single Wednesday here on YouTube talking about the most important topics going on in the world of sports. And today is certainly no exception as this morning we were given some very sad, heartbreaking news that one of the greatest running backs in the history of the National Football League Gail Sayers, the Kansas Comet, passed away this morning at the age of 77. It was announced uh, officially by the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So I obviously never saw Gail Sayers play, but from everything that I've learned and the people that I've spoken to who actually saw him play, uh, he is without question one of the top three greatest running backs to ever play this game. I mean, he was known primarily for his speed, his elusiveness, and being one of the toughest people to tackle every single game. So it's a very difficult thing. And, and, I, and I do know that Gail Sayers is known a lot for the one quote that he gave, which was, just give me 18 inches of daylight, that's all I need. To be very fair, from a lot of the things that I saw, yeah, he really did only need 18 inches and he was gone. You know, immediately as he got past the offensive line, nobody really could tackle him and nobody could catch up to him. If you tackled him, you most likely were going to get your ankles broken. And if you had to do a race against him, you had no prayer catching up to him. And that just shows you how talented of a player Gail Sayers was in his time and why he's still regarded as one of the best running backs to ever play the game of football. Gail Sayers was born in Wichita, Kansas, and he actually ended up living most of his childhood and also when he was in high school, living in Omaha, Nebraska. And he decided to return to Kansas and play for the Kansas Jayhawks at the University of Kansas to play his college football. He had 4,020 all-purpose yards in three seasons with the Jayhawks. He was a two-time consensus All-American, and that is also where he got his famous nickname, the Kansas Comet, and primarily because he was just as fast as a Comet on the football field. Nobody could catch up to him. Nobody had a prayer of stopping him. Then, when Gail Sayers was done in college, he went into the draft. And at that time, the NFL and also the AFL were fighting for star players. And Gail Sayers was drafted in the top five in both the NFL and AFL drafts. In the AFL, he was drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. And in the NFL, he was drafted by the Chicago Bears. When you look back at it now, you kind of wonder to yourself that, especially because the Chiefs made the first Super Bowl and ended up making two of the first four Super Bowls, would Gail Sayers have been a big reason for, for them getting there? I think having Len Dawson continue to be the quarterback and being as good as he was, adding Gail Sayers as his running back would have just made the Chiefs that much more dynamic. And who knows? With Gail Sayers being there, maybe they would have gone and won the Super Bowl in Super Bowl One, and maybe even again also in Super Bowl Four, and have two Super Bowl championships through the first four years of the NFL and AFL, you know, battling it out. So we'll never know, but he chose to play – for the Chicago Bears under the legendary George Hallis. And before I kind of talk about what impact Gail Sayers had once he got to the NFL, I want to talk about Gail Sayers, the man, because Gail Sayers was known for being a very quiet, a, a very, you know, respect, respected human being who, you know, didn't beat his chest, didn't say how good he was. He just handled himself like any professional would. And his demeanor was so impressive to George Hallis that in 1967, Gail Sayers became the first black NFL player to room with a white player. And that man was Brian Piccolo. Now, for some of you who are watching this video, you probably know where I'm going you know, with this next part. But if you're not, this is what I wanted to discuss because this is something that is very, very important to mention. Both Brian Piccolo and Gail Sayers were completely different people, not just from the color of their skin, but of just who they were. And you never would have expected them to become not just great teammates, but best friends. And that's what happened. They became best friends and they enjoyed each other so much. And they just loved being around each other. And unfortunately, before the season started, Brian Piccolo was diagnosed with cancer. And back then, you know, medicine wasn't as advanced as it is now. And he and Brian Piccolo did pass away before the season began. And this friendship and this, this bond was so big 
that in, I believe it was 1975, Hollywood decided to make a movie about this called Brian's Song. Their relationship was so impactful and so important that it motivated people to continue to you know, believe in equality, believe that every man deserves an opportunity. And that's why it's so important even talking about it now with all of the racial injustice that we're dealing with in this country, that there are a lot of really, really good people out there. And it doesn't matter if you're black, white, if you're you know, Latino, it doesn't matter. You have just as a significance in this world as the next person. And both Brian, both Brian Piccolo and Gail Sayers proved that because back then in the, in the 60s, you know, we were still dealing with a lot of racial tension. I mean, we're still dealing with it now, but it was much worse in some regards back then. And just the fact that those two got along uh, and being in the NFL, this was not the AFL, this was the NFL. And they made history together that you didn't really think about it that much at the time, but they still you know, made a lot of history and it showed that their relationship proved that things can work black and white. It can work. We've seen other football movies kind of like that. You know, Remember the Titans is another one, but Brian's song was one of the first that we really saw where we said, you know what? Black people and white people and people of all color can truly get along, even if they're completely opposites. They can get along. There is that relationship that can be built. You just have to continue to be yourself and showcase yourself because then if you're as open as a lot of people are about racial equality and you know believing that every person should be judged by the content of their character, not by the color of their skin, it can go a long way and it can create some wonderful friendships like Gail Sayers and Brian Piccolo had. But that was something that I wanted to share because a lot of people want to talk about Gail Sayers as this great football player, but in many regards, he was just a better man and a better person because even during the very difficult time of being a black man in the 60s and even the 70s, with, with everything that was going on, for him to continue to have this great demeanor, continue to be this professional and not let those things bug him so much, it's just a, an, an incredible, an incredible job by him and just shows you know, what type of content this person had in their character. But going back to now talking about Gail Sayers' time in the National Football League, he did choose, like I mentioned before, the Chicago Bears. And in his rookie year, he had 14 rushing touchdowns. He had 22 total touchdowns that year. And the 22 total touchdowns was actually a rookie record that he set until O.J. Simpson broke it a few years later. Uh, right away, it was impressive. And also, Gail Sayers tied an NFL record for most touchdowns in a single game when he scored six against the San Francisco 49ers in the muddy, very old Soldier Field in Chicago. But he did win Rookie of the Year, so that was his first accolade being in the NFL, but he was not done there as he actually finished his career with five Pro Bowls, four first-team All-Pro selections. He also won two rushing titles in 1966 and 1969. He won Comeback Player of the Year in 1969, and I want to get into that a little bit more in just a second. He also was just recently voted into the NFL 100th Anniversary All-Time Team, and he finished his career with 4,956 yards and 39 touchdowns on the ground, but he was also one of the best return men of that era and one of the best return men in NFL history. And he finished with 3,172 rushing yards and eight return touchdowns. The next thing is that Gail Sayers only played between 1965 and 1971. The big reason for that was because he was dealing with knee injuries. Now, obviously, you know, with the way medicine has advanced so much, getting a knee injury is something more that can actually be recoverable where you can continue to play. But back then, it was pretty much like a career-ending injury. And that was the unfortunate thing of Gail Sayers' career in the NFL is that it was very, very short-lived, only seven years. But he was able to come back in 1969 and win a rushing title and comeback player of the year, like I mentioned, after dealing with that injury. The other thing that people want to kind of knock on Gail Sayers a little bit is that the Bears, they never made the playoffs in Gail Sayers' career. And I'm sure that was very sad because that was kind of that period where, you know, you had not only him, but you also had Dick Butkus on the defense. And those, those two guys, you know, they're Hall of Fame you know, players. They're great players. But the rest of the team just wasn't as good as they were. And as a result, they could never get over the hump to even just get and play playoff football, which is very sad because we know the Chicago Bears as one of the flagship franchises, one of the bedrock franchises in the NFL. And 
it did take a little bit longer, you know, until obviously the 80s before the Bears became really, really good again and eventually did win a Super Bowl. But nonetheless, Gale Sayers had a Hall of Fame career. He really did. He constantly was, from that seven-year span, he was the best player in the National Football League. He was probably better than most of the players in the AFL at that time. He was certainly the best running back. There was no question about it. I don't think anybody else could match what Gale Sayers was able to do. And I also mentioned before that he was very well known for being elusive and one of these guys that it didn't matter if he had a good offensive line or not, he was just going to make plays. That's why a lot of people, even like myself, have compared someone like Saquon Barkley to a Gale Sayers. Why some people would compare what Barry Sanders did to what Gale Sayers did. Because Gale Sayers set the mark for being a guy that it didn't matter how good or bad your team was, he was always going to go out there and perform at a top level and able to make plays even when things didn't look like they were possible. There were several times where Gale Sayers had to reverse field and go the other way and he would just blow past everybody. He didn't have to lower the shoulder or anything. He just blew past people. Now, when it came to lining up against and going right up to defenders, Gale Sayers was not afraid to do that either. He, was, he, he struck a lot of fear into opposing players and constantly would lower the shoulder and be as physical if he needed to be at that point. Gale Sayers was a guy that was just unstoppable. It's just unfortunate that he never got an opportunity to play and win a championship in his very short career. And it is unfortunate as well that an injury like a knee injury back then cost him to play maybe another five, six years. And I'll just, you know, it's, a, it's amazing how sometimes the best players in these sports usually retire too soon or, you know, they get bogged down by injuries. There's always something like that. And it's, it's very unfortunate. It, it really is. But Gail Sayers still had one hell of a Hall of Fame career. And as a result, he did get inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1977 at the age of 34, which at the time made him the youngest player to be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The fact that in 1977, just six years after he had retired from the NFL and he was not even in his mid-30s yet, he was already inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And he said that he gave a lot of his success in the NFL to the great Papa Bear George Hallis because he took a chance on him. The sad thing is that as he got older and we had been hearing that he had been dealing with dementia and he actually sued the NFL for the fact that they did a very poor job of, you know, taking care of him even after his playing days were over, especially with the lack of information that they had with head injuries. Now, things have certainly bettered themselves for the last five, 10 years, but Gale Sayers, obviously he suffered like a lot of NFL players did from head injuries. The cause of death was not uh, announced, so nobody knows exactly what is the cause of death. I hope it wasn't because of dementia. You never want to see somebody die because of complications with something, whether it's COVID-19 or cancer or dementia or anything like that. You never want to see that. You, you hope that people can just die peacefully, but we know, unfortunately, that's not always the case. So obviously, it's a very sad day in the National Football League. It came as certainly a shock. And I will be very honest with you guys that this was not the topic I was going to be discussing uh, for this week's video. But you know, once I found out about it and once I, I got confirmation, I knew I had to talk about it. It's very important. I think people need to understand, uh, especially young people that might be watching this video, um, to understand that there were some great players way back in the day before we were even close to being born. And people don't talk about Gale Sayers enough because they say, oh, he only played seven years, blah, 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 never won a Super Bowl. You have to look at just Gale Sayers, the player by himself, and realize he was one of the most elusive running backs in NFL history. And we have not seen very many players since then that can do what he was able to do. And that's why I mentioned Barry Sanders and Saquon Barkley. It's really the only two other guys that we can really say, yeah, it didn't matter what type of team they had around them. They could still do great things. And Saquon proved that through the first two years. And it's unfortunate that he tore his ACL this past Sunday and won't be playing the rest of this year. And he was struggling my, you know, no doubt with the offensive line the Giants have, but he's made so many great plays and done so many tremendous things that we have not seen since the likes of Barry Sanders and Gail Sayers. So it's a very sad day. Um, you know, obviously my condolences to the Sayers family um, and just rest in peace to one of the top three greatest running backs to ever play in the National Football League. Gail Sayers, once again, he died 
today at the age of 77. So rest in peace to the legendary Kansas Comet that is Gail Sayers. And with that being said, that'll wrap it up for this edition of Mofobo Never Presents. As always, again, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. You know, what do you, what do you guys think of Gail Sayers? If any of you actually saw him play, please let me know. I would love to you know hear about stories about Gail Sayers. Uh, if you have any other opinions of Gail Sayers, you know, please let me know in the comments. I would greatly appreciate it. Also make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you can check out new videos that we post every single Wednesday. We get new topics that come in every week. And also in the comments as well, let me know if you guys have any topics you want me to discuss in the next week's video. Again, every single Wednesday here on YouTube, Mofobo Network Presents. If you wanna stay up to date with the YouTube channel, you can subscribe to the Mofobo Network Facebook page. We're there, you can see the new videos that we post every single Wednesday. Also, you can check out the new podcast episodes that we post. That's right. We do have a podcast, the Mofobo Network Podcast, where just like here on YouTube, we post new episodes talking about things that are going on in the wide world of sports. We post those new podcast episodes every single Tuesday and Thursday. So between Tuesdays and Thursday, you get content from yours truly. So make sure you go subscribe to the Mofobo Network podcast, which is available on both Anchor and Spotify. And also just make sure to subscribe to the Mofobo Network Facebook page, where you can stay up to date right there with all the new podcast episodes and new YouTube videos. If you want to follow me on my personal social media account, you can follow me on my personal Twitter at T-H-E-N-V-P-S-H-O-W, and also on Instagram at N-V-P-Q-B-11. And all of the social medias and everything I'm telling you guys right now all of those links will also be in the description below so you can check them out there as well. If you want to just listen to more of my voice, talk about things that are going on in sports, you can also like and subscribe to the Devils State of Mind podcast, which is the New Jersey Devils-based podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network. There, I am the host where I talk all things New Jersey Devils, all things hockey, and so, so much more. So whether you are a Devils fan or a hockey fan, or if you're not, and if you just want to check out more content that I put out, please go like and subscribe to that. We are on Spotify. We are on SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, iTunes, wherever you listen to podcasts, just search Hockey Podcast Network or Devil State of Mind and you'll find it. You can also just go to the HockeyPodcastNetwork.org website where you can see not only Devil State of Mind podcast episodes, but also all of the podcasts for all the teams in the National Hockey League. We have a lot of great content coming up over the next couple of weeks, especially once we have the NHL draft and free agency. Please go check those out. We have a Twitter for the podcast at Devil State and Instagram at Devil State of Mind. And just like Mofobo, we have a Facebook page, Devil State of Mind, where you can stay up to date with the new podcast episodes that we post every single Monday. So we just posted another episode this past Monday and we post new ones every single Monday. So please go check those out as well. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And last but certainly not least, go check out my book right now on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, J-E-T-S, Pain, 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 which is about the pain and suffering of being a Jets fan. And, and obviously the Jets are off to a rousing start, am I right? I mean, they're really off to a good start. Uh, but yeah, if you want to just, you know, entertain yourself a little bit, have maybe a little bit of a laugh. And if you are a Jets fan, want to take a trip down a painful memory lane, you know, please go check that book out. It's available for hardcover and ebook for the price of $19.69. And if you're a Jets fan or a football fan, you probably guessed why I chose that price. So if you're a Jets fan, a football fan, if you know someone who's one of those, or if you just want to support me, please go check out my book on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Again, that's J-E-T-S. Pain, pain, pain. So thank you all very much. I really do appreciate you checking out this edition of the Mofobo Network Presents YouTube channel, and we will see you in the next video. Everyone continue to please be safe out there during this difficult time with the COVID-19 pandemic. Just continue to wear a mask, practice social distancing, listen to your health advisors, because we're all just trying to stay as healthy as possible. We are still in a very difficult time with the pandemic, but we are making strides to getting better day in and day out. We just need to continue to you know, listen to our health officials and get you to stay safe as much as possible. Shout out to all of the essential workers out there, you know, especially the nurses and the doctors 
people who work in grocery stores and just anywhere essentials are, and also just the people out there trying to make the world a better place day in and day out, not just here in the United States, but all over this globe. Because at the end of the day, we're all just trying to become the best versions of ourselves and continue to try to make a positive impact in this world so that the future generations that follow us can also live to have very happy and very healthy lives once we are gone. So thank you all of those guys as well. And as I always say at the end of every single video, no matter what's going on in the world, especially right now, no matter what hardships you might be dealing with in life, just remember one thing, to wake up in the morning, think positively, have a smile on your face, and kick some mofobo. So thank you guys very much for checking this out today, and God bless.